Right, so question six, we're told that the curve C has the equation y equals x plus 3 times x minus 8 all over x, and we're asked to find dy dx in its simplest form. Okay, um, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to expand out that top bracket. I don't like the way it is. So, part A. We're going to write it as y equals, and expanding it out, we're going to get x squared minus 5x minus 24. And that's all over x. And once we have it written like that, I'd like it written actually in index form completely so i don't like having this x underneath the line now there are other ways to do this but this is probably the easiest so what we can do is we can chop it up so split it up and write it as x squared over x subtract 5x over x subtract 24 over x and now writing it in index form x squared over x is x Minus 5x over x is minus 5. And minus 24 over x, I don't like that x underneath the line. I've gotten rid, rid of these two. So I'm going to bring this guy up here and write it as the power of negative 1. So minus 24x to the negative 1, like so. So using the laws of indices here. Right, once we've done that, that's the hard part. So dy by dx is going to equal, so differentiate here, derivative of x is going to be 1, derivative of a constant is 0, and when I take the derivative of negative 24x to the negative 1, well the power normally comes down in front, so minus 1 times minus 24, is going to be plus 24, and reduce the power by 1, going to give us x to the power of negative 2. So that's it. Uh, the derivative there taken. In fact, what I want to do, just tidy that up. So it's a wee bit neater. Okay, so we've got dy dx in its simplest form. It's absolutely okay like that. You don't need to bring this back underneath the line. Second part is we're asked to find the equation of the tangent to C at a point where x equals 2. Right, and the important thing here is I'm asked for the equation of the tangent. Now, tangents you may or may not know, are straight lines. So I need the equation of a line, essentially. So what am I going to use? A formula that you need to know, absolutely off by heart, you need to know this formula, the equation of a line from your coordinate geometry, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So what you need to use is we need to use, uh, we're going to need to work out a, a value m, which is the gradient at a particular point, and we're going to need a point x1, y1. So you're going to need the gradient and a point. Now, we've got the gradient function, so let's work out what the gradient is at where x is 2. So where is x equal to... Um, what's the gradient when x equals 2? What we're going to do is we're going to write dy by dx... This is part B, by the way. dy by dx, and we're going to evaluate it. We're going to evaluate it. What is the gradient when x is equal to 2? So substitute now x equal to 2 in here. We get 1 plus 24 times 2 to the power of negative 2. At 2 to the power of negative 2 is just in case you're wondering, 2 to the negative 2 is actually equal to 1 over 2 squared. So if, um, turn it upside down and change this sign. And 1 over 2 squared is 1 over 4. So 24 times 1 quarter is the same as 24 divided by 4, which is going to be equal to 6. And when we tidy that up, we get 7. So dy dx, when x is equal to 2, the gradient of the line, when x is 2, is 7. So we've got the gradient here. 
Now I need the point. Well, I know what the x value is. The x value is 2. I need to know what's the y value. To get the y value, we're going to substitute it back into the original function. Remember, this is the value, or this is what y is equal to. So, y is going to be equal to, now we said x is 3, we want y when, sorry, when x is 2, we want y when x is 2. So y is going to equal 2 minus 5 minus 24 times 2 to the power of negative 1. Which is going to be 2 subtract 5 is negative 3, take away, and 24 divided by 2 is going to give us 12. So using the laws of indices here, which is going to give us negative 15. Right, so I know the value of x, I know the value of y. In other words, I now know the point x1, y1 is going to be equal to to 2, negative 15. All right, so we've got the point. I've got the gradient. Now it's time to use this formula here. So we're going to go back to this all-important formula. Absolutely vital. Got to know it off by heart. And we're just going to plug it in now. So you've got to be good with your coordinate geometry here as well. Right, so the equation of the line is going to be y minus y1, which is negative 15, which makes this positive, is going to equal m, which we've worked out to be 7, times x minus x1. So let's take that 2 away. Okay, let's tidy it up. y plus 15 equals 7x minus 14. And before we go ahead, let's see, do I need to put it in any particular way? No, it doesn't ask me to write it in any particular form. The equation of the, the tangent, the equation of the line. So I'm just going to write it in the form y equals mx plus c. So y is going to equal 7x. And taking 15 away from both sides, going to give us negative 29. Okay, let's have a look at the mark scheme. Make sure we've done it right there. So really quickly... Um, yeah, y equals 7x minus 29. Um, you can have a look at the, where the other marks are coming from if you wish. Um, and there's some notes on the mark scheme. And over here, what did the examiner say? Uh, very successful question. Some people couldn't divide by x. Forgot how to chop it up and then write it in index form. So careful, might make sure you know how to do that. Um... Occasionally, the numerator and denominator were differentiated separately. Strange move there. Um, anything other important that I can see? Uh, finding the equation of the tangent, numerical mistakes were common. Guys, I know it's a non-calculator paper, but be careful. Don't make those numerical and arithmetic mistakes. And sometimes confusion between the value of dy dx and the value of y. So, obviously, some people were substituting the x value back in and didn't know how to get the y value so some people forgot how to work out the point